What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Vulcan and today we are taking a deep dive into Claudia. So just like with Frig, this is a closed test client and because of that, please take everything you see here with a big grain of salt. It could change between now and September 15th when Claudia is released to the global version. So what we're going to do in this video is go through everything that her weapon, the Gurren Blade, brings to the table, as well as her awakening traits and some really good pairings that I found during my testing. So to get things kicked off, this is the Gurren Blade, which is the weapon that she's using. Now, please correct me. Is it Gurren? Is it Gurren? I'm not entirely sure. So if you know, let me know. That way I can adjust my pronunciation. But either way, let's go through this thing. So right out of the gate, her abilities here, we have an A tier shatter and an S tier charge, which this is going to be really important. We'll talk about that in a little in a little bit, but being able to charge her weapon quickly is super nice and other weapons, I should say. Then for her type, she is physical, so she does have Grievous. So this is a fantastic type. Um, when your weapon becomes fully charged, you're going to inflict 137% of your attack with the next attack that you make, and you're going to make the target Grievous for 7 seconds, which is going to increase their damage taken by 20%. This is why people really like physical teams. They like the extra damage or the debuff that you're going to put on a target, which causes them to take the extra damage. And she does come with physical resonance. So here you are going to be able to increase your physical attack by 15% and your physical resistance by 25%. Now, just like other resonances, you need to have two of the same type in order to kick it off. Now, because physical is a, I'll say, rare type um, in the current state of the game, we have Shiro and we have Bai Ling. You have to have one of those in order to make this whole thing work. And for me, I prefer Shiro. I think Shiro is a much better character than Bai Ling um, for me personally. But if you really like Bai Ling, you can always go and use her as well. But either way, Shiro is here and this is going to kick off that physical resonance. So before we get into advancement, I do want to go through all of the stuff that this weapon can do. So first off, in terms of your normal attack, it's typical. You have your um, attack five times in a row. You're just swinging your sword. As you can see, we have some rising damage as we do more attacks. We have jumping strike, which is going to allow us to attack four times in a row in the air. We have our first attack, second attack, third attack, fourth attack, and again, it's going to rise up. The fourth attack is going to deliver a knockdown, though. So if you're big into knockdowns and control, then that's going to be something to keep in mind. Next, we have Cyclone. So if you hold the normal attack button after a normal attack, you're going to trigger Cyclone. Upon hit, you're going to suspend the target and deal um, some attack damage to a single target. We'll go over these in a second. I'll hop out and show you what they look like. Then we have Diving Edge. So you want to tap and hold normal attack while airborne, and this is going to trigger Diving Edge. While you're falling, you're going to deal damage equal to 10% of your attack, plus 25 for each hit. And then once you land, you're going to deal a larger amount of damage and knock the target back. Obviously, the higher the altitude, the greater the damage. And then you have Sneak Attack. So let's take a look at what some of these look like. So here's your, oh, hold on a second, let me flip over to actual sword here. So here's your actual basic attack. You kind of have just this normal chain here. Here's your aerial attack. And that slam, which knocks down the enemy. And then if you hold normal attack while you're in the air, you're going to do this sort of like buzzsaw blade motion here, and you're going to deal some damage. So those are the normal attacks, but let's get back to some of the other things. So in terms of your dodge attack, you have your regular dodge, but then you have a leap attack. So when you do a normal attack after your dodge, you're going to swing your blade and deal damage. And then you're also going to strongly suspend the target and send them airborne. So dodge and attack. So you can see kind of what that looks like. You do sort of a swipe and then a knock up. Okay, so that's normal and that's dodge. Let's talk about the skill. So I really like the skill that Claudia has. So you're going to dance through targets while swinging the blade, dealing damage, and you're going to hit a total of five targets. Now, if you hit the same target multiple times, you're going to deal 20% less damage. This is an important thing to note. So keep this in mind as we work through our advancements. 
Now at the end of the skill, you're going to slash the space in front of you, dealing a larger amount of damage, and you're going to suspend targets. You're going to be immune to crowd control while this ability is in use, and all the damage you take is going to be reduced by 50%, and the cooldown is only 15 seconds. Keep that in mind. That is a ridiculously low cooldown, especially when you pair it with other things. So that's Roam, and we'll talk about that in one second, but I just wanted to jump into Discharge really quick. So when you have Discharge, um, great stuff here. Whenever you charge your weapon or you jump into Fantasia, then you are going to remove all your debuffs from the wielder. This is normal. Then you're going to charge and strongly suspend a target dealing a large amount of damage and leave a blade storm behind that deals um, a decent chunk of attack damage to the target. And you're also going to gain immunity to Grievous, Freeze, Burn, and Electrify for five seconds. This is a fantastic skill. So I have some gameplay of this and I'll put that up while I'm talking about this that way you guys can see it but basically it's just a a stationary blade storm um, that'll deal damage and all of that fun stuff so let's take a look at the skill because I know you guys probably want to see what it looks like so if we jump out here and we hit number one we can see she puts a whole bunch of slashes everywhere and then makes a large explosion so it's a pretty cool looking skill I thought it was like a pentagram at first and I was like dang Claudia um, but it's not so let's go ahead and let's jump back in and let's talk about what she brings to the table in terms of baseline stats as well as advancement because her advancement to me is really cool and i'm very excited to jump in and actually start working through advancement for her so in terms of advancement her one star each time when a skill or discharge skill hits a target a stack of damage boost is granted which increases damage dealt by eight percent for 25 seconds this can stack up to three times and each successful skill or discharge use can only grant one stack. This is important because remember, back on our skill, it's a 15 second cooldown. So we're gonna be able to use it before that 25 seconds is up and you have a 16% damage dealt increase. That's not including any um, discharges that we get access to as well. So getting this 24% increase should not be overly difficult to pull off especially when you pair it with a weapon like Absolute Zero, which has a big charging stat. And the cool thing with Absolute Zero is the fact that her dodge, she has Surge and she has Tesseract, both grant weapon charge points upon use. So you can see here, this is a guaranteed thing you can do that's very simple to do. And you're going to get weapon charge points, which will then allow you to charge up the Guren Blade which will then allow you to use a discharge skill. That way you can stack up um, this damage dealt even faster. So that's something I think her one star is fantastic by itself, just in terms of damage dealt. And this is why people, when they were talking about, oh, once Claudia gets here, Subasa might take a back seat and she may. Subasa does require a little bit more um, management right between her dodge attack and all of that fun stuff but truly when it comes to both of them it's really dealer's choice i mean both are providing a great damage increase subasa is a cast and forget you know you do your dodge attack you send it out you get a damage boost and if you have her um three star then you can easily get three stacks and get 15 percent very very quickly so between the two of those you're gonna get damage boost so truly it's just kind of dealer's choice there so in terms of two stars, she's just going to increase her base attack. Three stars, hitting a target with a skill or a discharge skill will apply a stack of war wounds to this target, increasing incoming physical damage and shatter effects from physical and elemental weapons taken by the target by 10% for 15 seconds. This stacks to one time. This is kind of a brutal thing to read, um, to be honest. There's a lot of ands. So basically what they're looking at here is whenever you hit a target on top of the damage boost you get, Whenever you hit a target with a skill or a discharge, you're going to apply War Wounds. Now those War Wounds is going to apply a debuff that's going to cause increased physical damage and shatter effects from physical and elemental weapons. Now that's going to increase it by 10% for 15 seconds, and it's gonna stack up to one time. So that's important because there's another thing we can do to increase the stacks of War Wounds. So. Overall, this is only increasing the damage we're going to be doing with physical, which is why you want a physical team, and then the shatter effects from physical, which is why we pick Shiro. She has decent shatter, and 
as you go through and activate her advancement, she's going to get even more shatter and going to increase even more damage. And you can see here, increasing damage dealt to all elemental um, shattering effects within full bloom. And then as you continue to work down there, you can even get things like attacking a Grievous target extends the duration of Grievous by additional seven seconds, which allows you to deal even more damage. So there's a lot of synergy between the physical units, which I really, really like. So in terms of your four star, it's just going to increase the weapon space HP by 32%. And then for your five star, so hitting targets with skills or discharge skills, again, you can see kind of the theme here, grants an additional damage boost, which increases all damage by 20% for 25 seconds. And this cannot stack. This is granted in addition to what we see for three stars and one star. So she is an absolute damage boosting unit. And I absolutely love that about Claudia. And that is why I want to go and try to pull her. Then we have six stars. So hitting the same target no longer reduces the damage dealt. So it took me a second to figure out what exactly they were talking about here. So clicking on this eyeglass to go look at our skill, to look at our skill, this is what they're talking about. Attack on the same target deals 20% less damage. So remember, if we have a bunch of characters in there and or a bunch of enemies and we continuously hit the same ones, especially for bosses, they're going to take less damage. Six stars completely removes this negative effect and they're going to just take the normal amount of damage stacking up uh, multiple times, right? So after using the Gurren Blade or a Discharge skill, all targets with War Wounds within eight meters get another stack of War Wounds. So this is where things get super interesting. So if you get six stars, which I know is a long haul and a grind, you have to get very lucky to get six stars on limited banner if you don't want to spend a ton of money. Anyway, so your three star here. So you're hitting a target with a skill or discharge. That's going to apply the war wounds. That's going to give you that 10% increased damage and shatter effect. We can stack this up twice for a 20% increase. So overall, what Claudia brings to the table in terms of her weapon, the Gurren Blade, is just ridiculous. There's so much extra damage, there's so much utility, and there's so much debuff. I absolutely love it. So out of all of the limited banners so far, this has been the one that I'm most excited for because I can see a ton of potential building around her to take advantage of all the damage boosts, but all the debuffing. And if you guys have followed my channel for any duration of time, you guys know that I absolutely love debuff dot-based builds. Like that's just my play style, not entirely sure why, but I just love that play style. So anyway, that's what we're working with here with the Gurren Blade. So let's take a look at her matrices. So her matrices is multi-directional strike. This is gonna increase damage by a certain amount, depending on how much you wanna upgrade this, when hitting a target in midair or initiating an aerial attack. It's going to reset double jump upon hitting a target in midair as well. And then the four piece is hitting an enemy with a skill, reduces the cooldowns of all weapon skills by a certain amount, and increases the damage of discard, discharge skills by a certain amount. So for me, her matrices are okay. Um, I think like this kind of two piece would work better with a different character, maybe like Samir or something like that, since she's mostly aerial attack. Um, but for Claudia, I don't really see a, a ton of use, right? Obviously damage is damage, but I really like this four piece. Hitting an enemy with a skill reduces the cooldowns of all weapon skills by a certain amount and certain damage. I just, I love that. I feel like that is really good and you can pair it up with Shiro in her advancement where she shatters a target and reduces the or resets all the cooldowns um, for your weapons so both of those i mean you're just gonna have cooldowns on top of cooldowns which is fantastic so there is a little bit of use here but i would see if there's a different matrix that might work a little bit better for claudia so now that we've talked about the weapon and we've talked about the matrices let's talk about her awakening so for her awakening traits she has blink and shadow so Blink, she's going to go invisible for one second upon dodging. Very straightforward. And then for Shadow, it's going to be 1.5 seconds upon dodging. So, yeah. Yeah. So going invisible for a second and a half to a second um, is great. I mean, you're going to drop off the radar and you're going to be able to avoid some damage, I'm assuming. Um, but this seems to work better for PvP, I would imagine. Um, not entirely sure, but I think there are better awakening traits out there for me personally. But you might be able to take advantage of this and really create something cool with it. Now, for me, I'd rather go for like an attack or maybe something a little bit more useful, like a utility thing for whatever team or whatever comp that I'm working on. But this is what Claudia is working with. 
So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Claudia and everything that she's going to be bringing to the table. Now I'll have another video kind of going through some comps, some good like pairings and things like that um, as to whether or not we should pull for her on the limited banner. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think so far about Claudia and will you be trying to pull her on the limited banner on September 15th? As always, if you like Tower of Fantasy content and you want to see more of these deep dive videos, please subscribe and like. It helps me more than you guys know. And as always, this has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.